In the late 1970s, a group of young Cambodian refugees arrived in the United States, fleeing the horrors of the Khmer Rouge regime. They had escaped unimaginable terror, having witnessed atrocities that no one should ever endure. But even in the safety of their new homes, something dark had followed them, a terror that refused to let them go. Among the refugees was a young man named Vanna. He had lost his entire family in the camps, and though his body had escaped, his mind remained trapped in the horrors of his past. Like many of the others, Vanna began to experience vivid, terrifying nightmares. These were not the usual dreams of stress or anxiety, but something far worse. Each night, as he closed his eyes, he would find himself back in the darkened jungles of Cambodia, running from faceless soldiers with blood-stained hands. But there was something else in his dreams, something that wasn't a memory. A shadowy figure lurked in the corners of his mind, always watching, always waiting. It was as if the terror of his past had taken on a life of its own, a malevolent force that had followed him across the ocean. The nightmares began to worsen. Vanna and the others in his refugee group started to avoid sleep, knowing that rest would only bring the spirit closer. They spoke of it in hushed tones, describing a dark figure with glowing red eyes that hunted them in their dreams. Those who saw it said it whispered their names, promising to finish what the Khmer Rouge had started. One by one, they began to succumb to the spirit. Vanna's closest friend, Sereth, was the first. He had stayed awake for days, his eyes sunken and bloodshot. But exhaustion overcame him, and he finally fell asleep, hoping for a moment's peace. Instead, his screams woke the entire camp. They found him convulsing in his bed, eyes wide open, pupils dilated with terror. When the convulsions stopped, Sereth was dead. The doctors could find no cause for his death. His heart had simply stopped, as if he had been frightened to death. But Vanna knew the truth. The spirit had taken him. Panic spread through the group. The refugees became desperate, trying anything to stay awake, drinking coffee by the pot, taking pills, even resorting to self-inflicted pain. But nothing could stave off sleep forever. Eventually, exhaustion claimed them one by one, and with sleep came death. Each time, they would wake screaming, clutching their chests, eyes wide with the realization that the spirit had found them. Vanna knew it was only a matter of time before the spirit came for him. He tried to stay awake, but his body was failing. His muscles ached, his eyes burned, and his mind was a blur of fear and exhaustion. But worse than the physical pain was the knowledge that, no matter how hard he tried, he could not escape the spirit. It was always there, waiting for him to slip, to close his eyes for just a moment. Finally, after days without sleep, Vanna could fight no longer. His body collapsed, and he fell into a deep, dreamless sleep. But the peace did not last. The spirit found him, as it had found the others. In his dream, he was back in the jungles of Cambodia, running through the underbrush, the distant sound of gunfire echoing in his ears. But this time, the faceless soldiers were gone, replaced by the dark figure he had seen in his nightmares. It stood before him, towering and malevolent, its red eyes burning with hatred. Vanna tried to run, but his legs were leaden his movements slow and labored. The spirit advanced, whispering his name in a voice that echoed with the cries of the dead. Vanna, it hissed, you cannot escape me. Vanna screamed, but the sound was swallowed by the darkness. The spirit reached out, its hand cold as death, and wrapped its fingers around his throat. Vanna struggled, but his strength was gone. The spirit's grip tightened, and the world began to fade. When the others found Vanna the next morning, his body was cold and lifeless, his eyes wide open, frozen in a final expression of terror. Like the others, there was no physical cause of death. It was as if he had simply given up, his heart unable to bear the weight of his nightmares. The story of the Cambodian refugees spread, reaching the ears of a filmmaker named Wes Craven. He was haunted by the idea of something so terrifying that it could follow you even into your dreams, something that could kill you in your sleep. It was the stuff of nightmares, the kind that no one could wake from. 
And so, the spirit of those nightmares lived on, immortalized in a story that would terrify millions. But for those who knew the truth, the story was not just fiction. It was a warning, a reminder that some horrors cannot be escaped, even in the sanctuary of sleep.